Welcome Street Rats to Night City. I'm the one and only Moxie 11, bringing you slightly biased news footage from the fourth wall. When we check back in, we start with Wraith, learning what happened to him as he escaped the nook after the shootout. He was chased by the NCPD and almost got caught before giving them the slip. He was able to hide and send me the text to say he's alright, while laying low until the heat died down. Snipe by the time he's able to move, and passing a thrift store, he grabs a silver hand hoodie, some burritos from a nearby vendor, and calls Dave Wacko looking to party. At the party he avoids any drugs, hypes people up about his show, and drinks until he passes out. The following day, Wraith gets a call from Cass, telling him we traded the car and are headed to see Jamalia. We discuss plans to meet at the safe house in North Oak, getting a, and Wraith gets a ride from a groupie, as thanks for the lift, as well as a means to hype up his show, he sends her one of his new songs, which she loves. Once we have Wraith's gear, we make our way to see Jamali at Rory's Clinic, which is in Kabuki proper, near Sakuru Plaza. The place is named Rory Cybernetics, and as we park, I notice a group of Dye Knife members down the street watching the clinic. Kenna stays in the car and keeps an eye on the gang, while Jamali lists the rest of us inside. The space is very different from Hans's place. There's no waiting area, the surgery chair is right in the main room, though Jamalia does move to a back room to bring us tea. As Wraith talks to her, we learn that Rory has a gambling problem, and as we're told this, a man enters from the back room wearing a white leather jacket and dressed very similar to the Die Knife gang members. To our shock, it's Rory, who's not kidnapped. He was only ta taken temporarily to be told he needs to clear the gambling debt he owes the casino. Instead of cash, they want Rory to perform a surgery on a Tiger Claw lieutenant that goes by the name Blue. Essentially, remove all the blue cybernetics from him. We're given a photo of Blue, his real name, before Rory says he has everything in hand and storms out. Jamalia tries to get him to listen and accept our help, but when her words fall on deaf ears, she turns to us, pleading to help him regardless. And Cass agrees we will. As Cass and Jamalia finish talking, Wraith heads out, walking up to the Die Knife crew on the corner. I get in the car and start it, just in case. Wraith invites them to his concert and says he wants to get in contact with their boss, giving out his deeds. They take the number and let him go without incident. Once we're all gathered in the car, we debate where to go to talk, as our bar, Frank's, is currently unavailable. Cass finds one called the Jackal's Lantern, which sounds great until we realise it's in the Glen and too far from where we need to be. In the end, we head over to Cammy's place, an apartment complex by the name Caldoria Heights. Inside and seated, we start making a plan once Cass hands Cammy the Tiger Claw phone to see if she can hack it to get its list of contacts. She can do so, but she needs a Faraday cage. Hoping Swag has one we can use and to check out the BD that's ready, we start to leave when Cammy asks me to hang back. Once we're alone, she tells me she's sorry she snapped at me and that I was right. As she starts to cry, I pull her in for a tight hug and warn her that Kenna knows about the baby and she should probably still tell Cass. When I make my way to the car, Cass asks me if everything's okay, and while I fail to convince him that everything's fine, he doesn't press me. At a scan D, Wraith and I head to the back to see Swag, who hands over the BD chip and tells us he can get, a, get his hands on a Faraday cage, but he'll need an hour's notice and 50 eddies. Deal made, Wraith invites Swag to his concert and gets a free BD before we make our way back to the arcade proper. Kenna doesn't want to wait, and so we grab a booth as soon as one's available. Wraith, Kenna and I watch the BD while Cass keeps a lookout just in case. The video is from Jenny's POV, screaming and fighting as two men abduct her as collateral for Rico's troubles. The first man is about five, six foot five with a linear body, cybernetics that make him far more blocky than he should be. He has antenna going back and out and glowing white eyes. The other man is short, a blonde mullet and a pirate moustache. His red leather jacket has flames on the collar and down the sleeves. The static that prevents us from being able to hear where she's being taken, and none of us are familiar with the men in the image. Wraith and I can both read lips, however, and between us we manage to decipher, take her to something lantern. We also make out that they say to clean the security footage. While I don't know any lantern, Cass did mention a club earlier with that as part of the name. On the off chance, I mouth the word jackals over and over to see if it lines up with the video. Sure enough, it does. Jenny is at the jackal's lantern in the glen. 
To watch the story unfold live, tune into Saves vs. Death every Saturday at 8.30pm Eastern at twitch.tv slash saves vs. death. If you can't watch live, be sure to subscribe to the Saves vs. Death channel on YouTube so you can watch it as soon as the recording is released. You can always download it as a podcast. Stay safe, cyberpunks. This has been your Night City Recap with Moxie11.